Good evening. We're going on the Yes, we are. This is the B-O-O-M Boom live public service broadcast, a very special broadcast titled The Institute Pursuit, a public research presentation by me, Jam, on my final project and thesis, Mythologizing, a personal, performative, and now socially engaged practice. Let's get into it. What is going on, people? How y'all doing? How y'all feeling? That's not my chair. This is my chair right here. How we doing? How we feeling? Public? Yeah. yeah. Welcome, welcome to the BOOM Boom Live Public Service Broadcast, a very special broadcast titled The Institute Pursuit, a public research presentation of my final project and thesis. Can't really call it a thesis, I'm not gonna call it a thesis. I'm not. Titled Mythologizing, a personal, performative, and socially engaged practice. I am your host, Jam Boom Boom. It is really good to be here. It's been a long, long a long time coming, and I got some knowledge and some information. So, the way that this is going to work is that I'd like to run down very briefly and interpret the data that I collected over the last two years, being a Towson University MFA theater arts graduate student. Man, that feels good to say. I appreciate that. All right. So, the first section of my paper is titled Mythologizing as a Personal Practice, My Lived Experiences as Prerequisites for Scholarly Endeavors. Part two is titled Mythologizing as a Performative Practice. This will be my presentation of experiential data as instructor of record and community arts practitioner. And lastly, I'd like to engage my public and prompt mythologizing as a socially engaged practice, a creative interdisciplinary approach to engaging with our stories today. All right, so mythology, again, this is an open forum. I'd like to first ask this question, mythology, what do we hear? What do we think of? What do we are, are aware of when we hear this academic term, mythology? Uh, we have a, a microphone over there if folks are, are interested. And in... Yeah, please, popcorn it. Ooh. Zeus, the almighty thunder god. Greek. 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 I'm, I'm hearing, like, not right now. <laughs> like, not today. I'm hearing another time. Oral tradition. Oral tradition, passing down stories. Correct. All right. And I also, um, um, well, I didn't forget anything, really, but uh, to also preface and say that there are physical copies of the paper. And then also, if you, everyone would like to pull up their devices and follow along the appendix, um, append, appendix number one and item number one. So what I'd like to do is introduce how I got to this point and thinking about these ideas. And um, I'll read a little bit from my paper here. So my positionality statement, I'm a first generation American and college graduate, meaning not only am I the first in my bloodline to achieve Amer American citizenship, but I'm also the first with social access to institutional resources. Through this access, I have accounted my lived experiences as a prerequisite towards my studies, an interdisciplinary approach to creating and interrogating theater eventually becoming the production. Ooh, we are live. Yes, yeah, we are live. Thank you so much, my community, my tribe. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Yeah, that's fine. Thank you so much, Precious. Uh, book Precious, if y'all need, you know, videography, photography, she got you, all right? You know, and she edit, all right? And she do it all, and she about to graduate. All right, cool, cool, cool. Shout out to the community. So let's get back to it. <laughs> through, um, yeah, so sorry. So through a, a methodical recount of my lived experience written in mythic proportions, which I'll just paraphrase for the sake of time, and a collection of experiential data teaching a college level course as instructor of record, a theoretical framework will be built to present mythologizing as a socially... Yeah, you mind telling that a little bit? Hey, that's what happens when it's live. I appreciate it. Let's give it up for Kai, y'all. Couldn't have done it without you. Yes. Quite literally, couldn't have done it without you. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. I'll continue. All right. So this is the phrase that I open up my paper with. If we do not learn to mythologize our lives, inevitably we will pathologize them. That is Father Richard Roy. Richard Roy, sorry. So again, if we do not learn to mythologize our lives, inevitably we will pathologize them. Again, I'd like to point it out to the audience. What do we hear? Uh, how do we interpret that sentence? Mm -hmm. If we do not learn to mythologize our lives, inevitably we will pathologize them. Uh, yeah, yeah, please. Maybe like 
if we can't sort of see our lives in the context of uh, something larger than ourselves, mm-hmm. then um, we're in trouble. We're in trouble. We're in trouble, like personal trouble, trouble with the law. Yeah, yeah. Placing ourselves and our narratives within a larger, what I call and what I refer to in my paper as an imperial mythology, imperialist mythology. But before being able to name a thing a thing or calling something out, I decided to practice mythologizing as a personal practice first. So mythologize means to over-exaggerate and to make something of mythic proportions. It's to, 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 in a lot of ways, American history has been mythologized. But this idea of heightening something that is super mundane. But what about we the people, folks who feel suppressed, oppressed? by uh, systemic racism, by systemic oppression. When we mythologize, we then become players within this imperialist mythology. But I had to start with myself first before I even presented this idea because I wanted it to make sense. So mythologizing is a practice that calls for reimagining and repurposing of our inner world as a creative toolkit to activate the world around us. This is done through memory recollection and lived experience as sources of inspiration for narrative building. The narratives are then embodied through performance exercises to theatricalize these stories for public consumption through various broadcast methods, making it a socially engaged practice too. One that can create a collective understanding of the narratives we live by consciously and unconsciously through our mindful interactions with each other. Mythologizing draws upon the ancient art of anthropomorphizing to attribute human characteristics or behavior to a person, place, or thing. The practice draws upon the study of astrology, the art of storytelling, and other systems attempting to give meaning to human existence, such as numerology, etymology, and psychology. Uh, To best illustrate how mythologizing developed as a personal practice, I find it on brand to introduce the journey through my own mythic storytelling. So I'll start with this quote from the book titled Personal Mythology. Through your personal myths, y'all saw that? Through your personal myths, you interpret the past, understand the present, and find guidance for the future. Your myths address the broad concerns of identity. Who am I? Direction. Where am I going? And purpose. Why am I going there? So I'll start with my origin story here. I am back at Towson University after first enrolling in 2018. I first entered the Towson University MFA Theater Arts Program fall of 2018. I was fresh out of undergrad, the wind underneath my wings with no sense of direction. Artistic direction, that is. I'd been learning about the history, the aesthetics, the works, and the impact of other performance artists for so long within these academic programs that when I could now frame my own artistry within the canon, I did not know how to. During a guest artist workshop with performer activist Tim Miller, I planted the seed. Shout out Tim Miller. I planted the seed. <laughs> I planted the seed of what would become the mighty beanstalk that is mythologizing. Tim implored us to go within to bring out our life story to express through our bodies. Tim's inspiring performance journey caused me to reflect on what societal issues I could address through performance. It was then I presented an early form of mythologizing as a heightened expression of one's identity through performance with the goal. It's very important with the goal of revealing systems that suppress this self-expression. There is one's personal mythology and then there is the larger mythology as I referred to before. I, I will continue to refer to this as imperial mythology. It'll probably take on another word later on. That when not this in imperial mythology, when not observed justly, can and will prove to overwrite our stories. So I was distraught with the myth. The false notion, that's another definition of myth. You know, like, that's a myth. You know, I don't believe that. And that was done on purpose. We'll get into that later. Um, So I was distraught. Well, let's we're still back in 2018, right? I was distraught with the myth or the false notion that I would not be able to position myself within this larger mythology. I decided to leave the MFA program in 2019. With the same wind beneath me that carried me into the doors of Taos University, I caused a tumultuous windstorm to tear through the theater arts department via a letter of resignation. See Appendix 1, Item 1. (laughs) This letter of resignation was not the representation I sought for myself as a potential scholar and artist. I sent the letter of resignation via email and completely disassociated myself from the academy, a theme of exile commonly found in political myths. 
Little did I know, y'all. Little did I know. All right, so within my exile, right, I'm like, damn, I'm down bad. You know what I mean? I'm really, really down bad, thinking about what I can do with my life, thinking about what I need to change. And so, you know, like anyone else, I hop up on the internet. You know, hey, what's up? What's everybody talking about on the internet and stuff? So I'm still fascinated by mythology. I end up doing a, a YouTube search, and I find this scholar and lecturer who was popping in the 90s by the name of Bobby Hammond. Bobby Hammond has a huge kind of echoing, bellowing name in the underground grassroots spirituality, black and urban community as an alternative radical and a revolutionary as far as different ways that we can look at mythology, religion, spirituality, and also to practice that in real time. Um, you can see Appendix see appendix 1, items 2 through 4 to get some Bobby Hemet content. There's a lot of, lot of different content on there. But um, although I cast myself away from the academy, my curiosity for knowledge, new and ancient, stayed with me. Bobby Hammett's legacy challenges traditional beliefs by advocating for spiritual self-discovery through esoteric synthesis and active knowledge utilization, inspiring his followers to redefine spirituality beyond conventional confines. Specifically, what drew me to Bobby Hammett was his breakdown of ancient myths and those similar myths found in today's pop culture. Again, see Appendix 1, Items 2 through 4. Ding! <laughs> Thank you. Bobby Hammond emphasized the active use of inner wisdom for personal growth, urging followers to leverage their insights for proactive spiritual development. See Appendix 1, Item 5. Bobby Hammond advocated for the responsibility in applying spiritual knowledge, stressing the importance of engaging with the spiritual information received for the benefit of others. So this was the common theme. This is where I was 2019, not really knowing that I shared a very similar experience to the mythic characters that came before me from all cultures, all civilizations past. And any, you know, right, right away, I'm thinking of the Lion King. Well, I mean, you know, Simba kind of, you know, had to, was kind of like forced away. But, you know, like that whole idea of like self-exiling yourself. Anyone else been through kind of like a dark night? the soul type of little you know just associate yourself yeah that's what i was going through too and i was making it like more than what it was i was mythologizing but i was starting to find my way out so 2020 the next section of the page is 2020 a new dawn i discovered dolo the pilot man aka the flight boss online through recommended video searches hailing from youngstown ohio dolo is an artist scholar and community leader embodying his personal narrative through self-expression and engagement with wider social political and spiritual contexts through the scope of mythologizing, Dolo was not only embod embodying, but capitalizing off of his characteristics, his persona. He skillfully presented the ways in which myths play out in today's time, for the good, via the inspiration to up for others to be themselves, critically engaged with the systems of the world around us, and for the bad, like online trolls, character attacks, and the gate and gatekeeping the exercise of new knowledge. I was most intellectually intrigued by his astrological and spiritual content. See Appendix 1, Item 6. Dolo's direct influence in forming mythologizing comes from his breakdowns of how to view astrology and spirituality. To make his claims, however, his reminder is that to introduce a, a new original way of looking at or doing something, you must be willing to oppose or be negative to what's once existed, including yourself. This calls for a radical yet accessible way of viewing astrology and spirituality. Spirituality is indiv individuality, Dolo simply puts it. Your individual solo space, that is your soul. The flight boss refers to our spirit as the observer of our experiences. When we practice separation from our circumstance, as in view what we are experiencing in the third person observation, we can become aware of all the possibilities at play versus getting stuck in our own bias, the cause of much contention in modern times. By doing so, we are placing our awareness outside of our personal mythology and into the arena of the much larger mythology. This was where the work of mythologizing as a personal practice began. Please scroll down to Appendix 1, Items 7 through 8. So, Dolo breaks down astrology as the mechanism on which we interact with the world around and around us and ourselves. Each civilization understands the tracking of time to uphold their society's practices. Deriving meaning from and interpreting these transits has become the system in which we categorize the time of year by the season. Ultimately, since we are born within this atmosphere, we are attempting to map out. We are. Oh, I'm sorry. Let me. Blah, 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 blah. Ultimately, since we are born within this atmosphere, we are attempting to map out. We are impacted by the transits on a deeper level. See seasonal depression. The meaning of these transits is interpreted as knowledge about what to do and what not to do according to the time of year. See Appendix 1, Items 7 through 8. Did I already say that? 
I took this knowledge to interpret my own inner world, understanding that there is a mechanism to life, the seasonal transits, to derive meaning from a valuable lesson, hopefully one that can benefit myself and others. To interpret that meaning, that is where storytelling and theater come into play, and to repeat it. This is the term performativity. I was inspired by the knowledge to upload my own content as it relates to theater and my own experiences. The very first video I uploaded was titled, Building Character Anatomy Using Dice. This right here. Let me turn the volume down. Oh, maybe I should turn it up. Because it's coming from it's coming from there now. Sorry. Building character anatomy using astrology and dice. So what I did right here is divide up Aries and Pisces. Don't laugh at my human portraiture. <laughs> and so basically what we're gonna do. And I'll okay. use uh, okay. multiple dice or just one die if you have one. Um, so this was a bunch. 2021? So right now Fall 2021? Building and so just being naturally intrigued by some new knowledge, how can it how can it inform my practice and what I already do? Not trying to imitate and be somebody else, but how can I extract knowledge and make it my own and interpret it in my own way, such as artists do? How you're building. So, yeah, there's more of that. That's a quick little plug for my YouTube channel. I'm on, I'm on YouTube, Jam Boom Boom. Holla at me. All right, moving on. So, lots of different videos. I have um, other videos. Uh, I made a little mini semester. Um, this one actually got some views. You know what I'm saying? It went, it went, it went crazy in the D&D community. Uh, this is D&D Dice Divination and Storytelling. Um, so, just giving my own interpretation. Well, that's not D&D. This is D&D, giving my own interpretation to these symbols, to these die. And um, I actually have some um, some dice up there as well as cards uh, that I interpreted um, uh, pr uh, my personal practice of using tarot. Um, so it's up there. Y'all can come and take a gander afterwards. But yeah, so I just started to, and even that practice of getting up and going live or performing live while I wasn't, you know, on stage at that time, this is like pandemic time. Um, it just gave me that umph to start to broadcast myself and to start get, to get into that vibe of, okay, I'm into something and 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 I want to broadcast it. And what I would also do is play it back and listen to myself like, hmm, maybe I can gain more confidence there or so, so, such and such and such. And so this, again, was a part of my personal practice. Um, moving on. Uh, I took the next several months developing a series of audio plays under the umbrella name Lost Dogs Chase Tales. Uh -huh. Taking the initiative to make sense out of my own life, that is, to create and exercise a personal practice that would help establish my identity within the larger context of the history of society, would benefit me greatly in establishing the first foundations towards my personal aesthetics as an artist. The first play that I wrote was titled The Institute Pursuit. It's a farcical play that satirizes my account of leaving the Towson University program. See Appendix 1, Item 15. That's more videos. That's more videos. Y'all see you later. My bad. <clears throat> I utilize Dolo's idea of the observer to help separate myself from what I once experienced via the art of anthropomorphizing my experience, all the while laughing my way out of a bleak time by making this play a comedy. A farce at that. I would continue using the process of using mythologizing to create plays with other self-published works like The Jaguar, The Big House, and That Thing. So, wrapping up my origin story, I uploaded more content online. I held free performance-based workshops between 2021 2022. This practice was driven by my motivation to make arts education accessible for folks outside of the academy. See Appendix, appendix 1, Item 16 through 19. That's just me. I'm like, hey, y'all. They were like, what's up? I said, I got something to say. They said, okay, cool. Shout out to everyone who participated. Um, somewhere after releasing the answer to pursuit, I got the crazy idea to re-enroll in Towson University MFA Theater Arts program. After meeting with the department chair and the program director, we all agreed that it would be a great idea for me to return. <laughs> mythologizing as a personal <laughs> mythologizing as a personal practice helped me engage with my past lived experience through narrative and play. This personal practice had now steered my actions towards pursuing the academy once again. Hold on, I just want to do a quick pause. Artists in the room. Don't y'all know, like, um, have you ever had that phenomena, that experience when, like, you're creating something and it comes to fruition or, like, you kind of, like, tell the future? Anyone else? So it's not just a me thing. We can, we don't got to get into what it's called. We can call it magic. We can call it prophecy or whatever. But it is a thing. Yeah, that's kind of what happened with the Institute Pursuit. Anyway. 
Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So earlier I referred to the revelation of discovering Flight Boss's mythic self-expression in today's time as both good and bad ways in which myths play out today. That bad side is revealed through character attacks, mostly online trolls to delegitimize, delegitimize new knowledge or claims that could benefit others. This notion perpetuates the very suppressive system, that imperial mythology that we engage with in our day-to-day -day lives, which helps carry the impact of that mythology as simply we are merely players within. Reminding myself of this, I knew that legitimizing my ideas to theorize them using the Academy's resources and pursuing an MFA once again would be pertinent to having a comprehensive understanding of mythologizing beyond a personal practice. Going into section two, going into section two, I want to do a quick vibe check. How y'all doing? How we feel? Oh, I got to do a time check too. My bad. I got really into it there. We good? All right, I'm about to just be yapping for like 10 more minutes. We good? All right, cool, cool. And we'll have questions towards the end. I'm not going to hold y'all. All right. Thank y'all. Thank y'all for being here. Section two, mythologizing as a performative practice, presenting experiential data as an instructor of record. So if you're following on your devices, you can keep on scrolling right on down. We are at appendix two and item one should be projects and process final proposal. So the following section of this document slash presentation is, de is dedicated to describing the experiential data I collected building the mythologizing course curriculum. The presentation, this presentation of quali qualitative research will help further the understanding of mythologizing not only as a personal practice, but a performative ensemble practice. So during the interim between my first and second year as an MFA student last year, I enrolled in the course titled Projects and Process, led by program co-director Dr. Tavia LaFollette. What's up, Dr. Tavia? What are you the right there. So that summer course last last summer had three phases, designing the path of exploration towards this final project, a deep dive and documentation of that exploration, and then merging that exploration to a full proposal with committee design needs and a draft budget. See Appendix 2, Item 1. Y'all can see all the money I spent. <laughs> <laughs> Through discussions with my thesis committee member, Dr. Tavia Lafollette. Um, I was granted the role of instructor of record, like me, like I'm teaching at a collegiate level. I'm like, uh oh, they done did it now. You know what I mean? I utilize. Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. Uh, so the the course was titled uh, uh, Performance Ensemble. It's a level 300 course that I taught in fall 2023. The prompt from the final proposal asked what will be created and presented. At that time, I answered, I will create a process to devising original theater called mythologizing, which is a process where participants are invited to explore their own personal myths, rituals, and from their exploration, share their stories through a devised theater process. It really came from that notion of like, I'm sick and tired of remakes. I'm sick and tired of us having to embody and go through method acting and, you know, shout out to Stanislavski and them, but it's time for something new. What would happen when we begin to embody ourselves? What would happen when we have different personas and characters that we can separate from because I know it get a little tricky but what happens when we act out ourselves and we we admi admire our own narratives and we say hey you know I know that's, I know that's Tavia's story you know what I mean now, what does that look like today so again using this course as an incubator is what I is what I titled it through that exploration so beginning with sources of, of inspiration both living and dead physical and digital I created a bibliography from which I drew pedagogical principles of mythologizing I cited Joseph Campbell as one of the only scholars with an extensive knowledge of myths as it pertains not only to ancient histories, but also contemporary misconceptions of what is considered mythic. Campbell's hero with a thousand faces and the inner reaches of outer space, they somewhere up here. Uh, or maybe they're not. But both serve as cornerstones to developing an awareness and reverence of the mythic in the present, often mundane, living moment. In the later, the, in the latter, the inner reaches of outer space, Campbell explains myth as a service. Indeed, the first and most essential service of a mythology is the one of opening the mind and the heart to utter wonder of all beings. And the second service, then, is cosmological, of representing the universe and the whole spectral, spectacle of nature, both as known to the mind and as beheld by the eye as an epiphany of such kind that when lighting fl lightning flashes or a setting sun ignites the sky or a deer is seen standing altered, alerted, sorry, the exclamation, ah, may be uttered as a recognition of divinity. Hmm. Continue with my new broadcast uh, practice I developed using YouTube, I decided to take 
uh, the option of recording our project updates via video camera. <laughs> Why is that video camera like, like it's 2006? <laughs> See Appendix 2, <laughs> items 3 through 5. The proposal also calls for us to do a budget as well. You can see the money spent over there. So the class roster have been determined. My guest artists were confirmed for the visits. And our journey begins, my first journey begins as instructor of record. Uh, this next section will demonstrate the data collected uh, during that course. It will serve, this data will serve to support my discovery of mythologizing as an effective performative practice. Mm -hmm. On my course syllabus, I made sure to preface concepts like astrology and tarot, which could be divisive, you know. As I, so I made sure to, to categorize that and to shape it as a creative toolkit to create theater. Also found on my syllabus was my instructor mission. My goal, which is, my goal is to leave you all with the ability to create and devise theater intuitively, instinctively, and practically. Empowering you with a creative toolkit to derive meaning from your experiences, including the world around you, and articulate those experiences into concepts and themes for solo and group performance. And we got to it, all right? So you can see the syllabus on here. All You can run through it as I, as I go on. Um, here are some screenshots from the syllabus. Got some good old, you know, I even had to quote, uh, teamwork quotes that will inspire collaboration. You know what I mean? But shout out to Leslie Felbane, my thesis committee member who inspired me to insert photos. I thought it was very effective into the syllabus. Um, yeah, I just using photos. So on the, on the appendix, again, you can scroll. Um, I'll just breeze over this. This was our first day um, for the course. This was last year. Um, astrologer, musician, community leader, Kale Sito, hailing from Chicago, Illinois, uh, was here on the first day. And with every guest artist, um, we had set up for them to hold a lecture and then for them to, because they're all practitioners in their own right, for them to hold their own event, inviting the community and the public. Uh, so Kale Sito was with us during the day. Uh, he did a general reading for all of the students, a, a, an astrological natal chart reading for all of the students. And the first project was to interpret that the natal chart. Um, I wanted to make it loose. I wanted to uh, the prompt very loose. And um, according to our final project and, and um, kind of the requirements was something along the lines of um, what worked and what, you know, what could be worked on. And so realizing with being an instructor of record, I'm realizing that, and, and perhaps, you know, it was the time, it was the season, but when it comes to kind of having looser prompts, I found the students had a lot more questions, like what can be done and what can't be done. And I'm just like, we're artists, y'all. Like, I want to see, I want to see your interpretation. But then it made me realize, oh, we're within these, we're within these walls that there is that idea of making sure you follow every, every guideline so that you hit it so that you make the grade. And, you know, I found myself just kind of contending with that invisible, like, oh, why can't we just break out and, and present something to be fit? But there's steps and there's a, there's a process to that, that I learned over the 16 week course. So I'm going to keep going down, keep going down. Um, um, uh, viewing astrology, the zodiac wheel through theater and performance, um, going through the house system, the planets, the signs, giving a very general idea. Um, I even have my, my chart up there as well. And again, looking at all of this as understanding the mechanism, how we derive meaning from this, how we interpret it, and how we repeat it over time, making it very simple to explain to a three-year-old and also making it very simple for artists and, and for folks just in general not to be so inundated by these bigger ideas, these bigger concepts. How can we mythologize them so we can capture them and eventually change the systems around us? So let's keep going down. This is pictures of me. Thank you, Kai captured these photos. Thank you, Kai. Put them up in here. Going to keep going down. Um, the discussion boards were popping. Shout out to Benjamin McCardell. I hope I'm getting that last name right. Benjamin was one of my students. Uh, a part of their um, interpretation of their natal chart was creating a zine of, uh, of their natal chart. And so I have a copy of that here. You can always view it on the website. I thought it was lit. I was like, this is exactly it. So shout out to Benjamin. Uh, the next week, uh, we did an introduction to myth. I found so many different definitions, but what I wanted to, and I was inspired by uh, the performance studies course taught by Dr. Michael Tristiano, I was taught how to break down, again, I'm really into just making something accessible, making knowledge accessible for us to then interpret in our own way. So what I discovered, what is myth? And what I wanted to break it down was, what does myth do? How does it do it? And what do we do with it? And the inspiration I got from Dr. Michael Tristiano was how to look at performance. What is performance? 
how it's hard to read upside down. How does performance do it and what do we do with it? I said, you know what? That that's a good way to break down myth. So thank you, Dr. Michael Tristiano. All right. Um yeah, yeah, yeah. So we're going to keep going down to it. So the next assignment was to create a Rick it, Rick it, remyth. Uh, I wanted folks in the class to uh, find. I, I provided links to myths from all over cultures and civilizations. And I wanted the students to find one that they personally resonated with due to the morals, uh, the, the principles, the virtues. And then in collaboration with other folks, remyth it. So like taking low key and yemma ya and like what would happen if they like came together and like joined forces or they were beefing. Like take Zeus and take Thor, you know, and just be like, you're me, but I'm you. You know, like what would happen that remyth again to get the interpretation of, of the students and what they're getting from the story. What do these characters represent. Do I still got my tag on here? Yep, I probably do a little button right there. I just noticed that. But yeah, again, uh, so again, just starting from the individual, understanding the individual process, again, mythologizing as a personal pro process, practice, the performative aspect being how do we collaborate, and then the third part in wrapping this up, the third part of the class was coming together as a group ensemble. So this is where we took everyone's myth, the personal narratives that we taught. We also had, uh, in between that, we had guest artist visit from Leslie Felbane and from JDB. JDB hails from Atlanta, Georgia. Uh, she's a musician. She's a tarot reader, energy reader, filmmaker as well. And so her lecture was about archetypes and tarot. We started to interrogate, okay, what makes this this tarot different from this tarot? How was it utilized uh, politically throughout history? And what do we do with it now? Because we all know what it's like to be stereotyped and to be cast or typecasted and to be archetyped. And we know the negative effects of that. But this is something that's been going on for like, a long time to, to the point where people would just put it on cards like you this. You know what I mean? Like that's, you know, but I want to break out of that. So we interrogated that. JDB and I created a game using tarot uh, to devise uh, theater. Um, it was lit. And and JDB also holds something called the Inner Child Healing Workshop, which we held here in October. Um, it was a truly transformative experience. Uh, JDB is also an interdisciplinary artist in her own right, merging psychology, spiritual concepts, tarot, and this idea of self-growth. Uh, excuse me, self-growth. So shout out to JDB. I appreciate you. And then Leslie came through. Leslie is uh, a former... Um, my undergraduate professor um, uh, and a huge inspiration for me and how to go about uh, embodying and being present using her expertise of body semantic work and as a performance coach has inspired my way of just carrying myself uh, throughout throughout the world. So I took a course called the Alexander Technique with her. I took a character development course um, and then also a movement for the actor. And it was how Leslie embodied being a professor within the institution. It was how she was aware of herself within these four walls that from all those years ago, I want to say from like 2017, I always remembered. So when it came to getting into the room myself, I was thinking about Leslie who was here with us today and uh, we're going to continue to work and collaborate. I need to, you know, loosen up my body, loosen up my chakras, you know what I mean? And, and if y'all need that, shout out to Leslie. She got her own personal practice. If y'all need it, like a little loosey-goosey and she's located in Silver Spring. So thank you so much. Leslie. All right. And Leslie was also one of our, our guest artists. And then uh, Madam Asita, who we about to join in on Instagram. Uh, she came in. She's hailing. Uh, hey, Michelle, aka Madam Asita, is hailing from Miami, Florida. Um, her way or, her way into theater is through improv. So one of the last uh, group guest artist visits that we did was a big old improv powwow session. And I'm going to tell y'all, the students ate that up. I even got the the critique and the feedback that like this is what excited them about theater they reminded themselves like why they got into it you know everyone's inundated with this day-to-day -day life getting the grade and paying the bills but they were like you know what this was it and so from there we built the final and what i presented it as a works in process um it was a final showing not necessarily a production just to kind of get that get the ease off of that as far as like whatever sort of um difficulties might come with having to present the final because this class was is more about the process and having the students um see themselves as the individual how do they come outside and interact you know with their in their community and then how do we like really go outside with it again how we're interpreting all these larger systems all right so we're gonna breeze through that that's some more work you know if you look through append appendix two all of the dang old items, you know what I'm saying? And it uh, culminated into a final performance that we held on uh, December 8th. This was also the week in my performance studies course where the final assignment was to put on a performance that engaged with the work that we read in our course 
how do we socially, politically engage with larger systems through the lens of performance? And I created and devised what a version of what we're seeing here. I called it the Capital J A M Boom Boom Radio Show, um, where I wasn't selling anything. I was more so creating a platform for other folks to share their stories. What I remember at my 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 entry into theater wasn't sitting in the venue and watching. It was listening to radio plays and it was listening and closing my eyes to all the soundscapes and to the characters. And because I couldn't, you know, see what anyone looked like, I just imagined myself as all the characters. So I wanted to <laughs> I wanted to harken back to that memory, but then also what does mythologizing look like outside of these walls what where is myth is it gate kept is it possible to make mythology i don't think that's what we're doing but we are engaging within a system that is based off of narratives we can access what's going on on the news channel we can access what's going on in our local community as far as like this is the enemy this is the problem this has been an age-old um uh, uh conflict from the beginning of time it's like dang so mythologizing really helped me to look at these larger larger concepts and these larger conflicts as narratives because I did the work within myself first and I'm continuing to do that I'm continuing to separate you know just from you know the, let's just say like attributes like being lazy and procrastinate you know what I'm gonna say you know what forget that part of myself that's not who I am let me mythologize and like, let me get up and do something for the day that's just a small little example of how we can mythologize throughout the day everyone has their own way of doing it so with that practice and putting that on and that is appendix three item one you can see I titled it a pilot episode because I knew it was going to be something. My mom always told me I was going to be something. I knew this was going to be something. You know what I mean? So I, I continued to develop uh, through the, the guidance and the mentorship of Tavia. I was advised to create uh, an artist residency with the local library. That's the Albert S. Cook Library. Shout out to everybody there. I never said this before, but I love that job. You know what I mean? I love my job. Shout out to Alex. Um, and, and I sent a proposal there. And then I also sent a, a proposal to the student run radio, XTSR. Uh, look, yeah, I'm going to take this time to say XTSR. You done, you done fumbled. You lost one. I sent a proposal. I spoke to the faculty sponsor right in front of their face. And they said, yeah, well, yeah, we like that idea. Yeah, 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 yeah. When push came to shove, no response. So I did what every good old DIY independent artist does. I set up shop right here and I decided to broadcast myself as a practice. I wasn't trying to be vengeful and spiteful because, you know, I'm still on my, don't nobody know who I am. And that's cool. You know what I mean? But that's not going to stop me because I, I don't have a foot in the door. That's not going to stop me from dreaming and putting up my, my dang old self. So that's how I started to practice this. Where is a platform where we can all share our stories that's not just in a book, that's not just in the library, that's not just in the university? How do we do this in our day-to-day -day lives? And it has to be queer. We got to go to work. We got to pay our bills. So it has to be through electronic devices. It has to be tuning in to 92Q, shout out to Baltimore, and listening to like the hot gossip and what would you do in this situation if you got hurt, if you caught with the pants down and all that. That is a form of mythology. I have to look at that through, this is how we're sh are sharing our stories. We have to look at social media even the trends what's being what's being trending right now so it's like like shout out to Cray Sean Rog and the blue face you know I'm looking at that as some drama as you know I mean eh, it could get tricky if you take it literally but again this is me practicing how can I how can I engage with my society through what it is that I've dedicated my studies through and the broadcast is a way that it's even evolved in and of itself and um I want to I want to wrap it up here just by reading this last um and just leave it some food for thought um, this is section three, mythologizing as a socially engaged or creative interdisciplinary approach to engaging with our stories. It, it would not be, and this is from Joseph Campbell, the hero with a thousand faces. It would not be too much to say that myth is the secret opening through which the inexhaustible energies of the cosmos pour into the human cultural manifestation. Religions, philosophies, arts, the social forms of primitive and historic man, prime discoveries in science and technology, the very dreams that blister sleep boil up from the basic magic ring of myth. And that forces me to look at what it is that we're participating in today. Why are things the way that they are? If we trace back the practice and not just follow, oh, whose interpretation, who's, who's better at doing this and that, if we just simply follow the practice of what it is that we're participating in, we can begin to interrogate and empower ourselves within this myth. We can create and write our own stories within this larger imperialist myth. So in this next and final section, I will reflect on the evolution of mythologizing from a personal practice, a performative practice, and now a socially engaged practice. I'm outside.
mythologizing started as a personal practice for me to make sense out of my life through what I was accessible to, through what was accessible to me, which is a theater arts education. It then turned into a practical way to create and perform theater. Now, through repetition and various opportunities to display that data I gathered, I've discovered the potential in mythologizing as a civic and socially engaged practice. I've explained mythologizing having a positive self-devising as a positive self-devising practice to empower myself and others, and I've offered and engaged various ways in which we can view ourselves outside of what is just prescribed to us by way of archetypes and prejudice within today's society. However, I am aware that the practice of mythologizing is not sufficient in changing our collective circumstance, being a part of this imperial mythology without the autonomy to write new narratives. Essentially, what I'm asking is, what can mythologizing do for us? I'm going to wrap it up. I'm looking at the time, man. Y'all the best audience out there because y'all really just been looking at me this whole time. Y'all really been looking at me this whole time. I'm going to just switch it over real quick. I want to check to see on Instagram um, who is still with us because I let these folks know. All right. I let these folks know. Let me see. Let's see. What's goody? What's goody? Is Madame Masita here? Oh, man. Let's see. Let's see. What's good? Uh, how do y'all you, how let people in? Oh, okay. Request. Who wants to? All right. Can I request? Who's next? All right, let's invite these folks. Because I'd like to take this time to invite the folks, the guest artists who are part of. Um, if y'all got to go, y'all got to go. I'm not going to hold y'all. But I just realized I was really getting into it over there. You know what I mean? Kale right. Sito, shout out Kale Sito. What's yo, good? yo, yo. All right, right Kale, I want to give you the, the, the audience cam. We got the hey, in, hey, in-house hey, audience. Hey, hey yo, Grandma yo, what's, good, what's good? What's good, y'all? I just want to show y'all to the audience. Yeah. Hey, first and foremost, it's so good to see y'all. I do apologize. I was going off. I was really just talking, y'all. So I do apologize for the for the time. But um, we we briefly talked about. Look, I'm gonna face y'all to the audience. Is that all right? That's yeah. Fine. That's fine. All right. All right. So I briefly, very briefly, because you know, just, man, time, man. But uh, y'all, this is Kale Sito Halen from Chicago, and this is Madame Asita from Miami. They were my guest artists for mythologizing. Uh, I'm a, I'm a just like do it like an open, open panel type of popcorn style. Like y'all can answer it as y'all as y'all want, but I like to just ask first. Can y'all hear me? Yes. Yeah, we can. All right. I like ask, to ask first. What uh, was your, what was your involvement with this final project? Uh, you know, like from your perspective, yeah, yeah, like it, it was it was a good experience. Uh, I came in, you know, knowing that astrology was a was an interesting topic, a unique topic. So I kind of just wanted to be like Professor Snape, you know what I'm saying? Like I just wanted to, tell you, like, you know, um, and you know. It was, it was, it was great. It was engaging. Um, I felt like I, you know, set the blueprint, you know, to, you know, the, the whole thing, you know, um, on the first day. Yeah. Yeah. So it, it was, it, you know, and it, it was, a it was a significant moment for me, you know, so I appreciate you for having me. No, no, for sure. That was that was legendary. No, thank you so so much. And the way that I I said no, yeah, the way I I set it up, I said we got our in-house astrologer. You know, like we got our in the house, you know, versus you know, and that's how you know, you know, I came out drilling like I wanted to teach. Like that was my thing, like because I actually right before you hit me up, you know, I was just used to basically giving information. You know, I just had I started writing down aspects of, you know, the sun through Pluto to see how we can characterize, you know, for myself, because I wanted to give examples for, you know, classes that I was thinking about teaching. So when you called me, it was just, I just had did that. And it was just like college so soon, you know? Absolutely. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. But it, it was interesting, um, you know. And yeah, yeah, I'm thankful for the opportunity. Oh, thank you, oh, thank you, thank you. Yeah. I um, I'm just to, to touch on that day. Um, someone someone had came up to me later, like you know, everyone had left, and one of the students came up to me and was just like, "Look, like I grew up in a Christian household. We was told not to touch this type of stuff, mm. and that made me think of how I'm 
how I'm framing this course to understand, you know, folks are coming in with their lived experience, valid, you know, like, and it's valid, but to really prompt this idea of how to look at astrology as a creative toolkit. Now you can take it as a personal practice, but it's just there. It is what right. it is. There's other right. folks and their bias using it for this, you know, using it to make a buck. That's what it come down to. Absolutely. But I want to say, I want to say thank you for the general reading that you provided because it gave them and everyone referred to it in the documents later too, you know, like, oh, I never got a reading before and stuff like that. So yeah, so thank you. Nice. I want to move it on to Madam Asita. Madam Asita, can you talk about, first of all, how you doing? I'm doing great. Thank, thank you, you so much for being here. Um, can you talk about your involvement with the mythologizing course? Um, wow. wow. So I was a little scared to do it because I feel like you guys had way more expertise than me. But it was so fun and I really appreciate the invitation. And I, I feel like I learned more than everybody. <laughs> The room, the whole ensemble shifted. All the students, something shifted afterwards, yeah. uh, just because yeah. it had been so individual based and then maybe working with one other person. But then when everyone was together, they were saying things along the lines of like, this is what reminded me of like why I fell in love with yeah. theater. And it was dedicated. We had like a whole two hours of just improv games. Did we even take yeah. a break? We, 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 we played like, like 20 games. Madam Asita came with all the games, y'all. My bad, I feel like I'm just talking with them. Okay, my bad, we're, we're presenting. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, feel like all of learned. Up, I, I feel like all of us learned. No, yeah, I'm looking at the time. I'm considering other folks' time, but I want to ask this last question to both of y'all. How has your personal mythology? You know what? No, I no no no. Let me get right. Let me get right because I had I had the actual like question question. Um, let me let me. Okay, come on, host host. How has your personal? Uh, how has the development of your personal mythology led you? to this moment. this moment. That that's it right there. How <laughs> has the development <laughs> of your personal mythology, <laughs> how has it developed to to you being here in this moment? Yeah. yeah. Um you know, yeah, like, like just, just affirming myself, I didn't grow up without a father. So even in astrology, like uh, some of my placements are tied to Zeus. So I always had to like father myself and, and being able to pass that down and be, you know, validated on some scale, obviously that's not, you know, nothing I indulge in, but you know, it tells me I'm doing something right. So, you know, changing the course of my life and, you know, uh, yeah, I think, you know, just me validating myself has kind of put me in this space where, you know, um, you know, I, I feel like I got something I got of, of, of value to offer to others. And uh, yeah, that's been my, my teeth. You know, when you when you when you from an area where I'm like, you know, a lot of a lot of the things ain't really passed down for you to know to do what's right or wrong. You know, there's so many taboos, so many temptations, so many people not like really, you know, caring about the right thing. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I, I essentially, you know, had my you know, own compass and, you know, uh, you know, some things you can blame it on love, but when I look at certain things, it just be wisdom in it. And so I have to kind of take that as an intelligence, you know, you know, from whatever I'm connecting with and I'm connected with astrology and, you know, you know the 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 value that it has brought to me and others and um um yeah that's how i put it so yeah that's why i'm here today I'm sure. <laughs> yeah, I, starting with yourself like seeking validation for yourself versus getting it from the world getting it from the chat getting it from yeah. the yeah yeah, yeah we almost, like, about that almost like having no option but to have that but but not even realizing as a child like that mm -hmm. is like you don't have I have no option, but like because you are on a course, like it, you know, I don't know. Like that's how I look at it. You know? No, that's good. <laughs> no, for sure. Making your own course. I hear that. Yeah. And Madam Asita, your personal mythology, your personal narratives. How mm -hmm. how has it led you to this? Well, I remember after the morning session, we had like a little break and we went out to lunch. <laughs> And um, I sat with one of your professors, Gavin Witt. Gavin, yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And we had a conversation, and like you were talking about the students and everything. 
and like how to grade somebody you know in an artistic field uh -huh. i'm also i'm so like a, a, a lot of mutable energy like sagittarius i want to do everything at the same time and doing improv you have like it's like a free-for-all so in life we have so many like options that we can go for but what you said in that conversation with gavin was like okay i want them to be artists but they also need to know like what they're being graded on so for creativity like for me after that i came out of it knowing like for creativity to thrive you really need to have like this is where I'm going to be creative. This is the canvas. Yeah, not, yeah, I'm yeah. Be on the walls, on the floor, you know. <laughs> I was just saying that, not to cut you off, but I was just saying how that pissed me off. Like, I was just like, do anything, but you really do need those confines. Is that what you're getting yeah. at? Like, you need that structure. Yes. Gotcha. And that's how I learned something. Okay. Yeah, because you can't, I mean, you could try to be everything, but at the end of the day, we also need to tap into certain energies and like be able to set little boundaries and limits. Work within our wheelhouse. For sure. Someone said that. Someone told me that. Was that wise woman, that wise woman over there? Well, all right, I ain't gonna hold y'all and I ain't gonna hold the live audience here. I wanna say thank you from the bottom of my heart for your involvement. Y'all keep doing y'all thing. Y'all already know what y'all gotta yes. do. You know what I mean? Y'all gonna keep Appreciate doing it. Appreciate you so no, much. Thank y'all for y'all time. Yeah, and I'm gonna just keep it here and wrap it up. Y'all can stay here or y'all can hop off. Yes, thank yes. you so much. I'm gonna I'm catch up with y'all after this. Thank all you right, again. Y'all take love care. You. All right, y'all. All right, let me do it. All right, I'm looking at the time, y'all, and I want to do a quick do vibe a check. How we feeling live in audience, audience folk? I know it's that it's about time we gotta do that deliberation yeah. too. So I do have, uh, sadly, um, if I, I want to skip over the interview with Leslie and JDB, and I just I want to ask the audience if they have any questions. Uh, I, I, I apologize. I'm sorry, just for sake of time. Um, but I would like to open since this is a public presentation. I would like to engage the public. Where is the fake microphone? Yeah, the prop microphone. If anyone has any questions, no, please, please, if anyone has any questions just as far as, um, you know, the, the material that some, I, I said or that you looked at, uh, inter interrogations, curiosities. Yeah, you feel comfortable coming up on here? Oh, come up on here! Come on, this is broadcast after all. All right, all right, come, come on. on, sit in the rocket chair, because you rock. All right, look. <laughs> all right, y'all. So who do we have with us? This is? Hi, I'm Alex. Oh, sorry. Hi, I'm Alex. <laughs> all right, uh, where are you from, Alex? I'm from Laurel, Maryland. All right, shout out to Laurel. Okay, all right, so, all right. So this is a, a public forum engaging, you know, the community. Um, you just sat through, thank you, the first ever oh, public course. research presentation. We're going to... Going Flex that muscle, but any questions, any curiosities? What's what's on your mind? Um, I guess once you mentioned kind of mythologizing your life, I was like, oh, that's such a cool thing to do. And I wanted to ask, is there any? I know you kind of talked about certain things during your speech, but can you talk about maybe one aspect of your life that you mythologized? Um, the the biggest <laughs> the biggest one <laughs> the, the the biggest one was being here in this institution. Mm was understanding that like, that was five years ago. Like that's five years of your life that you're just like, what was I thinking? Mm. And finding that when I wasn't inside of the academy, the, the school, yeah, I was doing those things. Like I was linking with friends and, and telling them about like the cool things that I learned. I was, right. I wanted to go to other folks' workshops and whatnot. And I wanted to still be, have that academic side to my, my practice. Um, but I'm like, wait, I done, I done did a bad thing in my story. You know, it just didn't add up for my story and how I wanted to represent myself moving forward. So I mythologize that part of my life. You can go check out the Institute Pursuit. It's about a, it's a six episodes. It's, you can check it on a streaming site. I get a cute little penny or you can, you know, stream it for free on YouTube, but it's a satirical kind of take on what it was that I was experiencing, you know, like things I anthropomorphize things such as like anxiety, such as like, oh, they're out to get me. Folks are out to get me while making fun of that situation right. in my life. So I mythologize that part of my life and it led me right back here. You see what mythologizing can do? <laughs> did I answer your question? Yes, you did. All right, y'all, give it up for Alex, y'all. Thank you, Alex. Thank you for Oh, Alex, what's your major? Oh, speech, language, pathology, and audiology. She got y'all, y'all. Y'all need a little help with... She got y'all. Okay, thank you, thank you. You can pass the mic if anyone... You can. Y'all can come up here. Y'all can stay there. 
any other questions? Any other um, uh, curiosities or WTFs? <laughs> All right. Well, I'm looking at time, and uh, we got to deliberate. Can and you new... mythologize the microphone? M mythologize this microphone? No, that microphone. Which one? Oh, yeah. This, this microphone is completely mythologized. Look at it. Flashlight. <laughs> but look how it functions. You see? It's all about the function. It ain't about where you come from. So let me not let me not get into it. But um I wanna say that is all for my first ever public research presentation. You can follow up with the material on my artist website. Um I'm very grateful and very thankful. Shout out to my thesis committee. Shout out to Steven Sosh Sada. Shout out to Tavia. Shout out to Leslie and JDB. And shout out to Dolo, the pilot man, the flight boss. Shout out to Kale Sito, Madam Masita. And um, yeah, this will be the first of many public presentations, research presentations that I will be doing. And um, the end. <laughs> thank you, thank you.